Hi guys, welcome to tutorial number 7. In this video, we are gonna learn about equation driven curves. We will also learn about these equation driven curves in both 2D and 3D environments. And after that, we will create a part using equation driven curve. So I'm gonna start with a plane, let's say front plane. Select this sketch. Now here, select this spline. Under the spline, select equation driven curve. Now here, we can see two equation types are given. Equation types are explicit and parametric. Now the first one is explicit type. We have all learned these kind of equations in mathematics. So just start with the simple equation. So I'm going to put a value here. Let's say 4 multiplied by sine x. And in the x, I'm going to start with 0, 2, 15. Press enter. And here you can see we have got a sinusoidal waveform because we have used sine in our equation. Let's take an example of a different equation. This time 3 multiplied by x multiplied by cosine of x. And we will start from 0 to let's say 18. And you can see this type of curve over here. If you just change the value over here, let's say 3 only a complete cosine curve over here which is not passing through the origin so as we all know the difference between sine and cosine curves now let's move on to our parametric equation now just click on parametric now here we can see the parameters are in the form of letter t so we have to use this letter t in our equation so let's say I'm gonna give it 3t then cos t and we have to put a multiplication symbol here and in the parameters I'm gonna start with 0 to 20. Now here you can see a different kind of curve with this parametric equation with these parameters from 0 to 20. Now let's take a second example where we're gonna change some values here. Let's say 12 multiplied by exponential, let's say 0.3 multiplied by t. In the y t, I am gonna use sine t and the parameters should be 0 to let's say 15. Now here you can see a different form of a curve. It might seem a straight line in this view but it has some curves over here. Let's take a third example in this 2D parametric. This time I'm gonna add some values in this equation which has 6 plus 2 multiplied by t and the y t value should be 5 multiplied by t plus sine t. Now in the parameters just we can leave it here and you can see this kind of equation. If you want to change it over here in t2 let's say 10 you can see it shortens the curve. If you change the value of t1 to 5. Now here you can see we have shortened the curve from here as well. Just click OK and you got the curve. Just select and delete. So these were the curves we have made in 2D environment. Now let's see if we want to create this parametric equations in 3D working environment. So just exit the sketch, go to sketch and under the sketch within this drop down menu select this and select 3D sketch. Now click on this spline and select equation driven curve. Now it is a 3D environment 
So under the equation, you can also see the z axis. Now here, I'm going to put an equation 15 multiplied by cos t and in the y t put the value as 0.8 and in the z t put the value as 10 multiplied by sine t and the parameters I'm going to use 0 to 6. So here when we pressed enter we can see a straight line but it's not a straight line when we rotate it with the middle mouse button you can see a partial ellipse over here so that's what we have created we can also shorten this partial ellipse with a different equation let's say i'm gonna put some values as 14 multiplied by sine t and let it be 0.8 and in the z i'm gonna put 10 multiplied by cos t and in the parameters let's say start range of the equation is zero and we can take the second value to a value such as pi then press enter now you can see a partial ellipse has been formed here now let's try to create a helix with the equation now here start with x t with 14 multiplied by sine t and in the y t let's say 4 multiplied by t 4 times t and z will be 10 multiplied by cos t and the parameters i'm gonna start with 0 and let it be 5 press enter now here you can see it is a still a partial ellipse but when you rotate this screen you will see it is in a form of a part of Helix. Now let's add some more turns to this helix. Just increase the value of the multiplier of z here. Give it as 14 and the end limit of the parameter let's say 12. Now here you can see it is looking a better helix than before. If we want more number of turns in this helix we can just increase the end limit of this equation let's say 20 and you can see here we have got more turns in this helix just click on ok and you have got the helix in solidworks a dedicated helix command is also given to us we can use that helix command as well if we need it just select and delete the sketch and exit this now that we have learned about the equation driven curve in both 2d and 3d environment i'm gonna create a simple part for you so just select a 3d sketch go to 3d sketch and select equation driven curve let's say 10 times sine t and in the y t 2 multiplied by cos 3 times t now for the z axis 10 multiplied by cos t and let's start the parameters with 0 to pi now here we can see a curve over here in all the three axes just click on ok if we want to complete this curve we can't mirror it because it is in 3d environment and in 3d environment the mirror command works only with the solids so to complete the curve we need to create one more curve which is identical to it in front of this curve just go to spline and select equation driven curve now put the same values as we have entered before for this one i'm gonna put these values and in this area in the parameters we're gonna reverse the values as we used before so just give the t1 value as negative pi to zero press enter and you'll get the curve just click on ok now in order to create a part using this curve we need to join the both curves here to do that just exit the sketch go to features and select this curve button just select this then select composite curve and join this curve as a single curve just select and click ok now this curve is a composite curve 
So it is a single curve. To create a part, I'm gonna join this curve with a circle. I need one more sketch here. So I need a plane over here, parallel to the top plane. So go to reference geometry and select plane. Now here, select the top plane from this list. And I'm gonna reverse this. So let's say 10 mm. Just click OK. Now here, select this plane and sketch a circle over here and go to smart dimension and dimension it as 6 mm diameter. Now exit the sketch, bring it to isometric view with control 7 key. Now hide this plane, select this and select this I button. To join these sketches, I'm going to use the surfacing command. So go to surfacing and select locked surface and select both of these sketches and click ok if you want to involve a less surface area under this bowl you can use a different command other than locked just select this right click and delete and here you can use boundary surface boundary surface gives you an option to modify the flow of this surface so just First, I'm going to align it like this, so it is now twist free. Now here we can select from this tag, just select a uh, normal to profile and I need this profile in the reverse directions. So just click on reverse and we can decrease the length of this increment of the surface now it's looking better and click ok so we have got a curved area over here now this part is open from here we can close it with the fill surface command just click on fill surface and we can select this edge over here and click on ok we can hide this curve over here this select and use this hide button now this product is in surfacing so we need to convert it to a solid body in order to convert it to a solid body we first need to unite these surfaces so just use knit surface and unite both of these surfaces select and click ok now these are united this area seems to be very sharp so just use a fillet let's say of 0.2 mm select this edge and click ok now it's better than before to apply thickness to this part just go to thicken and give its thickness as 0.15 select this part and you can choose on which side you need the thickness to be added you can select this from both sides, from outside and click OK. Now our part has been converted into a solid model. If you want to apply some appearance on this part and if you want to apply some changes in the scene, you can go to this beach ball icon that says appearance scenes and decals. Just click on here and select any scene you want from this screen. Let's say I want to choose the basic scene as backdrop studio room and apply some material on it. You can see some edges are visible in black lines if you want to hide them. Just select this display style and select shade it. Now the edges are hidden. If we want to apply a metal appearance to this part just click on this button of appearance and select the appearance let's say in metal i'm gonna choose bronze just select polished bronze from your left mouse button press and hold drag it over here onto your part and leave it and from this list select body so we have applied the bronze metal appearance on this part over here 
Now if we want to make it more realistic we can just go to this button and select perspective view. We can also turn on shadow in shaded mode like this. If you don't want just click on this shadow and it will disappear. So in this way we have created our part just go to isometric view control 7 and this is our final part. So now that you have learned about how to use the equation driven curve in 2D and 3D environment and how to create a 3D part in SOLIDWORKS with the use of equation driven curve as a practical application for it. If you like this video subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification icon for latest updates. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.